All right, so Apple just announced two new MacBook Pros, a 14 inch and a 16 inch. And both of these have been redesigned for this year. There's new tech, new features in them. But before we talk about the hardware features of the actual laptops themselves, I wanna talk about the chips because these are on a whole new level. So both of these laptops are running the next step or the next iteration of Apple Silicon. So you can configure them with the M1 Pro, which is like a beefed up version of M1. So it's got a more powerful CPU, more powerful GPU, and up to 32 gigs of RAM. But there's also the top end configuration, the M1 Max. And this is the king with the top of the line GPU performance and up to 64 gigs of RAM. But the thing that's most impressive about these chips, these M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, is how powerful Apple claims these chips to be for how little energy they seem to consume. See, M1, like the original M1, was really good. And at the time, it was very obvious as to how energy efficient it was compared to the competition, right? And it was really good at CPU performance. But it wasn't amazing in the graphics department. It was decent, but there was stuff that was clearly more, more capable. And at the time, I thought it would be very difficult for Apple to come out with some kind of follow-up to M1 that could compete with the market leaders like Nvidia and AMD. They are making laptop GPUs that are absolutely incredible. Like they push out really powerful graphical performance. But then they show this chart and they have the M1 Max running at around 55, maybe 58 watts and it's doing work, it's looking good. And then they show a equivalent Windows laptop. And you can tell that the Windows laptop is using more energy to perform slightly less. The thing is though, I'm familiar with that laptop. That's this thing right here. It's the Razer Blade from this year, 11th gen CPU from Intel, but it's running an RTX 3080 from Nvidia, their top of the line flagship GPU. So this is a GPU that can run at various wattages, right? And depending on what the manufacturer wants to do with the chip, like. This one here, the Razer Blade, is running it at 105 watts. Uh, it's a pretty good implementation of it, but if you really step it up, you can put it into a much bigger chassis and run the same GPU at a much higher wattage. So it's uh, in here, it's a 3080 running at 165 watts. This is the MSI GE76, which they all show showed in the graph. Now, if you look at that chart, the M1 Max is in between the performance of these two laptops. And as someone who's very familiar with these laptops, I've done reviews on both of them, I understand how powerful these things are. They're really good. They're, they're some of the best that Windows laptops have to offer right now. This one on the bottom is the best. I labeled my video on this, my review of it, the fastest, because it is the fastest. But to see M1X come in between these at 55 watts is Incredible. It makes me look at these products in a completely different light because if those charts are true and Tim Cook is saying no cap, this is a game changing moment for high performance laptops, right? Because the M1 Max can deliver performance like this, but it's way more energy efficient. So your batteries last longer and your fans aren't spinning as loud because it doesn't have to vent off as much heat and your thermal systems are lighter because it's easier to cool and you can power the whole system without even being plugged in, right? You're just getting full performance on battery. It's just a better product. M1 Max, M1 Pro are just empirically better products than this stuff if those charts aren't lies. But I kind of hope they are lies, otherwise Windows laptops just won't be the same to me anymore. Now, on top of performance, there's a whole bunch of new external hardware features. So in terms of ports, there's three USB-C, an HDMI, an SD card slot, and the return of MagSafe. I've always been a fan of this tech, but this time around, the cable that runs from the brick to the laptop itself, like that MagSafe magnetic component, that's detachable. So if a dog chews through your cable or something happens to the cable or something happens to the MagSafe head, you can just replace the cable instead of the whole charger. But there is one thing I noticed. So both the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros can be configured with that top end M1 Max chip, right? You get a 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU if you want. But I noticed that on the 14 inch device, if you equip it with that top end CPU and GPU, you only get a 96 watt adapter. But on the 16 inch device, if you get that same top end GPU, you get a 140 watt adapter. Now, the difference is 40, yeah, 44 watts. It's, that's significant. That's like a almost 50% bump up in AC adapter wattage to supply what is seemingly the same hardware on the inside, right? Now I understand the 16 inch device has a bigger screen and it's got a bigger battery. So maybe they're pumping more wattage to the battery for the fast charge, but like a 50% bump up in wattage doesn't really add up to just those, you know, screen and battery cells. I think if I had to guess that the 16 inch device is gonna be running higher wattage 
for its components. And because it's a bigger system, right? That's got more capable thermal system. There's more surface area, there's more powerful fans maybe. I think that the 16 inch devices will run their same components better than their 14 inch counterpart assuming that they're the exact same components on the inside. This is just a guess. This is based on just a wattage of an AC adapter, but it just makes sense to me. The displays are also very interesting. These are MacBook displays. So they're gonna have great colors, good brightness, and it's got ProMotion tech this year, so it can go up to 120 Hertz with adaptive refresh, but they have a notch and it's definitely strange looking. It doesn't support face ID for unlocking. It just houses ambient sensors and a normal webcam. It's seemingly a high-end webcam with 1080p and good image signal processing, but it's just a webcam. But around that webcam is extra screen. And the way they've done it, from what it looks like, they have like a regular 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. That's like the regular viewing area, but then they've extended vertically that screen into the sides of the webcam. Now, personally, I don't love the look of that notch. It's in a fairly tame spot, like it's not obtrusive or anything, but it's just weird, it's unconventional. Now, the good thing is that it's seemingly only for the Mac OS menu bar, like your apps never go up there, your content never goes up there. It's just exclusively what seems to be for the Mac OS menu, but it's just so different that when you first see it and you first interact with it, it's just, I can only imagine it being strange. But I also wonder, like, how does your cursor interact with that notch like does it go through the notch or do you have to maneuver the cursor around it to get to the other side i have so many questions but the fact that it doesn't support face id was also a little bit surprising like maybe the panel isn't thick enough to support a face id cam who knows maybe it's for like future iterations of this device it's just weird that this device has a notch with no face id uh the keyboard has a slightly different look to it like it's got a black anodized segment where the metal has been milled out, like that well that the keyboard sits in is this dark black anodized segment. You also have the big MacBook trackpad, improved speakers, improved mics, but there's also the battery. So Apple claims a 21 hour battery life on the M1 Max and M1 Pro, which is incredible. That's with video playback, I think for web use, it's like 14 hours, but those numbers are just unheard of in this category. Like when you look at Windows laptops and I reviewed a couple of them on this channel, you just don't get that. You truly do not even get close to those numbers. Like in this realm, five, maybe six hours of regular use is considered average. If you're hitting seven or eight, that's amazing, right? 14, what are we doing here? I need to test that out. Okay, uh, initial impressions, very impressed, but I am concerned about those GPU charts. They just seem too good to be true. They really do, but I'll be testing it in my full review. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.